But back in the 60s, an engineer called Donald Wilkes, who worked for Sandia, was knocking around in his garage like we all do, really, and then he noticed something. What he noticed was, if I take this tape, which is a strip of metal, and put an S-bend in it, as I move that, then the S moves. But of course, there's an issue with it, in that it's not actually very stable or easy to do that. And then, he had a flash of inspiration. What he did was stick two rollers in it and, of course, a cage around it. Now, this bit of tape I've got there is half a millimetre TPU because he found lots of things worked. Now, if I move the rollers, of course, the S moves in the tape. And if I move the cage, of course, the rollers move. And the rollers need to be so that they can't cross over, so that S is maintained, but they don't need to be the same size. If you make one bigger and one smaller, what you get is a change in speed, and so you get a speed reduction or a speed increase. And this became known as the Rollermite. So though it's a basic and very simple mechanism, it does in fact have some surprising qualities. Because it's all rolling friction, then the friction is very, very low. There's no sliding friction component to it. It doesn't need to be circular cylinders. All kinds of things will work, like triangle squares and hexagons work just as well. If you do things like change dimensions of the tape, so you put slots in it or made it wider or thicker at one end, then it could store the energy and act like a trigger mechanism. If you put something in here like a bimetallic strip, then it would roll and unroll depending on changes of temperature, so it could be used as a thermostat or as an energy scavenging device for changes in temperature. When it first came out, popular mechanics declared it to be the only true basic mechanical invention of the 20th century. It was a cause celeb. Now, because it was developed under a government grant, it became public domain, and so everybody could actually look at this and develop applications for it if they wanted to. Of course, there are a whole range of things that Wilkes came up with, including a valve, a thermostat, a trigger device, and a shock absorber. But, only moving backwards and forwards, although it's extremely useful, is somewhat limiting. And what Wilkes decided to do was look at if he could make that into a rotary device. And of course you can. What you essentially do is bend this round into a circle, which is what Wilkes did, and he came up with this design. And if we print that off, this is what we get. We've got three large red rollers, three smaller blue rollers, a central drive roller, which is basically the cage wrapped around, an outer cage, and then, of course, the rubber band. This, again, is TPU. What you do is you bend the rubber band into a trefoil. The larger rollers go on the outside of the trefoil, and the smaller rollers drop into the inside of the trefoil, so that it's like that, and that whole thing squeezes into that cage. So we get that, and then our centre drive goes in there, like that. Then if we turn that centre and hold this, what we'll see is those moving around. <laughs> like that. So what struck me was how much like a planetary gear system that was. Now, made in plastic like this, if you turn that, what happens is they do move a little bit and they kind of squish their way out, so it's a little bit awkward. But when I thought about the planetary gear, what I did was create this. It's a planetary gear planet carrier. And I've put some bearings on it, and we're going to put the rollers, which I've adapted to take a bearing on top, onto this new planet carrier section. So with our red rollers on the planet carrier, it now looks remarkably like a gear and planet drive. We pop our trefoil, our TPU trefoil, again, between those so that it's like that, and these smaller rollers then slot in like that, and we put the carrier top on, and there are three clips to hold the carrier top in place. That then slots into its blue cage. The white cylinder then slots into the centre there. So now if we hold that blue cage and turn the white centre, of course the red ring is going to move equally. If we hold the red ring and turn the white 
the blue will move. And again, if we hold the white and turn the blue, the red will move, just like in a planetary gear system. The major advantages of a system like that are it's very tolerant to inaccuracy. As long as these blue rollers can't cross across the centre of the red rollers that grip them and squeeze them outward, it really doesn't matter that much. It's kind of self-adjusting because they do exactly that. They squeeze out and hit the cage walls and so it's quite tolerant of that sort of stuff. Of course, it doesn't need any lubrication either, and it's very efficient at transferring the torque, or so Sandy has said at the time. Now, of course, it has disadvantages. One of the things is we've got this band here, and this band is being flexed continuously. Although Sandy did say that they tested this to a million cycles, and to give that some kind of context, if, if it were a light switch and you were operating it 10 times a day, it'll last something like 600 years. I mean, I made that up. It's just to give you an idea of the time. It, it lasts a ridiculously long amount of time, according to Sandia, but still, you're flexing a material, and of course, flexing something will eventually break it. Now, if you print this in TPU, what you'll notice is that the um, TPU band stretches. And of course, if you made it from metal, it would do exactly the same thing. It just takes a little bit longer. Now, of course, I will put all of these files up on Thingiverse, should anybody want to muck around with the Rollermite. But I thought I would show you the Rollermite. It's still used today in things like valves and switches, but it's a little obscure, and a lot of people don't really know about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.